go. All right, welcome. The Able Marketing Facebook Live for Monday, March 28th, 2022. Uh, for those of you that are here and likely returning from spring break, if you have children like I do. Uh, and so this is the first day back at school after spring break. So the house is quiet again while working. At least for me in the morning, it's 10 a.m. and we have Klein Achilles. And Klein is in not Toronto and not Eastern Canada, <laughs> but Central Canada, Ontario, just out, just outside of, or she's in Mississauga, Ontario. So I'm in Vancouver or North Vancouver as everybody knows. So let me just take this moment to welcome Klein. Well, Hi everyone. Hi Ben. Thank you for having me on. Here. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So what we're going to do today, we're going to run through a little bit. Um, I did some research and I looked at what you have on Instagram. Uh, things like that, and I'm, I'm going to share some of that stuff uh, as we go. Um, but let's get started because um, I wanted to know, first off, how you got into coaching. Because we've already had Marshall Stern uh, from Marshall Stern Leadership. And just looking, I'll put Marshall's uh, site back in here um, as well in the live stream so people can see it. So we've had Marshall, who's a coach amongst other things, business owner, entrepreneur. And so it's always good to have coaches um, on these types of things. And when I set up the graphic uh, for client, I build it as, um, let me just take a look, as a, um, uh, pull up the graphic here. Achieving success without burnout is something that I got from you, client, in, in doing some research on you. But let's start with, um, why did you start coaching or explain to me a little bit about how you became a coach okay so how i became a coach this was like quite a while back when i was really super into health and fitness i was a bodybuilder right. at one point a really avid bodybuilder i know we've talked about that and we have yeah we have yeah yeah and so what happened was i decided you know i like to become a, a personal trainer and when i started working with some clients, I realized that a lot of their health and wellness goals needed right. a more holistic uh, approach oh, to it. Okay. Yeah, like they're like they were coming in, you know, to to do the workouts with me, but there was a lot of mindset that still needed to be involved, and that's when I realized, you know what, like you can, like you know, once you've worked with a trainer for some time, the biggest yeah. obstacle really about the consistency and the sustainability has a, so much to do with your mindset and being able to take on those healthy habits and keep them going. Right. And that's when I decided that I would go into life coaching okay. because I wanted to work with clients a little bit more in that sense. Um, and I kind of actually stopped with the training in person and, um, right. So that's why I did because and then for myself personally, too, I also worked with my own life coach at a time when I was figuring out what I wanted to do with my career. And yeah, one of those things was, you know, tr trying out to be a personal trainer and then also right. going into life coaching myself as being another option. So interesting. Yeah. OK, so there's a few different routes for everybody. But um, I'm just going to drop some of your links in here, too. So we've got all your uh link tree stuff uh, and pieces organized so people can touch base with you. Uh, awesome. I, I do say there. like I am way more, I always say like point to like my Instagram and my like, the link tree. Those are the two areas I'm, I'm way more active and updated on. <laughs> um, yeah, fair enough. I just want to provide people with the ability to get in touch with you. Yeah, um, that's awesome. On the Facebook Live because it's kind of part of it, right? Especially if people see it. Um, mm -hmm. and so there's, you, you mentioned sort of health and fitness, getting into coaching. Um, mm -hmm. let's talk a bit, a little bit about achieving success without burnout. Is, is that a, like, that's a tagline for your business, but is it more than that? Do you think when people work with you, um, because is it a program that you have that's called achieve success without burnout or what is that? Um, I guess it's like that's kind of like the sum of like what we end up working together on and what a, what a lot of my clients come to me working on is is being able to achieve like certain goals that they have and actually be able to 
keep it going, right? I mentioned about the sustainability and and keeping the habits going. It always has to do with our mindset. And so that's the biggest component that we work on. Um, so for me personally, like, like with like just even going back to, and I know that I've moved away from the health and fitness, um, more specifically that, that area of coaching, um, and more of a general, but just even being able to compete at the bodybuilding stage, like I had to really, like, I burnt out after that because I really just, that was my biggest focus. And and I realized, like, if I wanted to actually be able to keep my healthy habits going beyond the stage, like, I had to find a sustainable way to do it. And it had to do with really think re, rewiring my brain and really thinking about health and wellness beyond just a short period of time and just, like, working yourself to get to that goal. Interesting. Um, because, yeah. Interesting. So that's when I work with my clients, when I work on uh, working with their goals, it's a a lot of that is like, yeah, they can hit that goal, but then they find themselves sliding back into old habits. So Mm -hmm. it's, so now it's like, okay, well, let's talk about success in terms of long term and actually being able to keep it like, that's uh, really interesting. because, Like when you talk about sustainability, I'm always curious because, and mindset too. So how do you maintain or how do you teach that sustainability and mindset? Because I, I would think you travel along on a certain path mindset wise and you rewrite, then you get to a point where you say there's burnout, but mm-hmm. then it's like, how do you know when it's burnout? Like there's just so many things, right? Like how do you know when it's burnout? And it's like, everybody almost needs a reset. So how do you know when you need a reset? I think of my recent experience where first week of spring break here two weeks ago I went on a vacation and I was away but I was still kind of working and at some points I kind of felt like okay I'm not having a break but sometimes when I'm on vacation I felt like well I kind of get better ideas or there's little things that happen or um, it helps me when I relax to think of new things but Mm -hmm. how does that work because I feel like it goes up and down maybe for me compared to other people and you know it's just like you feel like like you have these peaks and valleys right and you sort of feel good for a while and you stop and you're like okay now I need to take a break um so can you explain a little bit about that because I've got some other questions about you know like how you get into um when working with new clients how do you get started with them what is you know an, an indication for you that this client is a fit and we'll cover those but talk a little bit more about that sustainability piece because that seems you know really interesting to me Yeah, like we're so taught in society, first of all, to like, we got to be on the go, be so busy, work, 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 work. And we're taught that rest and relaxation and time off is a reward. And that is like the Uh, one of the biggest pieces of work. And that's what I'm talking about with the mindset of like rewiring your brain to realize like, no, like rest is essential. Rest is a necessity. It is never a reward. And and uh, to really teach your brain to like, yeah, to really teach your brain to like, be like, it's okay. And like, give yourself permission to take the downtime and to take it like, as like, to give yourself to take it as often as you need without justifying it. That's the other thing too, is like, uh, there's an underlying justification of like, I can only rest once I've hit my goal. You know, there's also that like, saying I'll like I'll sleep when I'm dead (laughs) it's kind of like that is a really terrible like if we really think that's a really terrible quote and it just really further exemplifies the kind of like uh perspective that we take that a lot of society has taught about what rest is and like you were talking about like you took a break like you were um just on spring break but you know when you were you know allowing yourself to rest and relax like you got some really great ideas And like, wouldn't it be awesome if that was like how it worked for the most part for you is like you were in that space constantly, right? And that's when you've like alleviated that stress and pressure on yourself to work because we really don't need to. Uh, We actually perform way better when we're not stressed out. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's the case for anybody, right? We we know that. And so, you know, I'm glad we had this discussion and hit on that. I'll have to follow up with you a little bit more about that because um, I always felt like, and I think I've told you my story where... Uh, with the start of the pandemic, I decided to, to, like, my life totally changed where 
started my own business. Now I'm two years into it. Uh, you know, a lot of it was necessitated because with COVID, my daughter didn't go back to school for the last month of school in 2020. Um, after the first part of the lockdown in BC kind of lifted. And I just sort of started my own business kind of thing before that. Um, and I think about where I was two years ago to where I am now. I'm like, wow, it's way different. And like, you're just kind of like, what am I going to do? Right. And now you're two years later, like, well, yeah, I do. Like, I've worked on it, but I've worked on it. Right. And so mm -hmm. I think it's really important for me when you talk about mindset and, and sustainability. I often feel like with with that kind of venture, like you think you're going to get to a point where it's going to be easy or it's going to be or it's going to stop or it's going to be consistent. Right. Where it's like, well, now I know I've got X amount of clients and X amount of dollars income or coming coming in per month. Um, and so I have to figure out what and where that is. And I know that. But sometimes I'm like thinking, well, it's going to get to this point that then what? What's going to happen kind of thing, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Well, that's that's the thing, right? Like, again, like we're talking, like, okay, if you hit this milestone, it'll just, you'll be able to, like, you can see, you'll be able to relax, you'll be able to, like, ease up on things. But, like, how you're doing things now is how you will continue to do things after. So you really got to, like, intentionally be like, you know what, like, like, I don't have to wait till I hit my goal. I don't have to wait till I hit a certain number of clients. I don't have to wait until I hit, like, a certain thing before I, like, allow myself to, like, rest, right? Like, and 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 ease up. And, and you mentioned, like, you know, we talked about how when you don't have so much stress and pressure on yourself, you do way better work. You are way more productive, way – you get things done faster. So it's kind of like why not have that skills now? Why not develop those skills of – of, of, yeah, of, of the long-term sustainability, because you're going to want to have this business, right. For a long time. Right, Ben. Um, exactly. so it's, it is honestly like in the best interest, like when, like you want to just, you want to hit a goal, but you want to be able to keep it right. And to right. be able to do that, you've got to develop the skills now, like be working on it now for the long term. Yeah. And I think it's also when I started and you don't realize that, even if you're a marketing person or a marketing professional like me or whatever, and you're leading and running a business, you often think, or I used to think, I don't need a coach or I don't need that coaching, but oh yes, you do. And you need it just as much as anybody else needs you to uh, help them with marketing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And it's also changed the way I view how I interact with clients and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. When I started to think about, well, if you're actually thinking like a coach and, and you need to help people, um, and you're helping people, you have to change your mindset. So yeah, I mean, I like I've talked about Marshall's program, and I took the create program and I'm still like putting it in my calendar daily to do work related to it. And then I think, well, I'm mean, just working on goals, am I just wasting my time? Like I'm not doing yet again, productive work that we're that's bringing bringing in money, right? So it's like, is it a waste of time? Well, it's not really a waste of time. You know what I mean? Like, I used to think that way, but now I'm not so sure anymore. Yeah. I think like, just like actually just even bringing up the term productive and like waste of time is like, those are really just like judgments and opinions. No one has the same opinion about what is considered productive, what is considered a waste of time. Right. And if we right. actually just, again, that's just pressure on ourselves to, to like be producing and like making sure we're not wasting our time but that's just like judgments and opinions and if you can just let go of that and allow yourself to just spend your time the way you want to spend your time and just know that no matter what you it can always be productive and it's never a waste of time kind of thing that again is alleviating that pressure off of yourself that will prevent the burnout kind of thing so yeah. interesting Interesting. Mm -hmm. So let's do, let's dive into a couple more things. Um, so we talked a little about your start with coaching. So here's the thing that I always ask uh, people, sort of a generic question for a lot of the lives, but uh, we've touched on it already. Um, how do you get started with a new client? Like when you're starting to coach? Uh, um, like what do you, like how do, well, so I work with clients primarily one-on-one. -on -one, so. Okay. So yeah, what I mean, like when you get started with a client, like how do you get started with them? How, how does it happen? Um, oh, okay. So always, we always first start with a consult and we always talk about, you know, where they are, where they want to be. So what are their goals? Okay. And then like, what are some things that they see standing in their way 
from getting there, like in right. like what's worked and what's kind of worked. And then I give them my thoughts about like where I think they're there. They could actually work on things. Um, what things will actually get, help them get to their goals faster. And like you talked about earlier, Ben, about how, like, how, like you thought you didn't need a coach kind of thing. And I don't think you ever really need, need a coach, but it's just like, right. why wouldn't you want one? Because they can give you that outside perspective and help you see I things think that's that what, you are yeah, not they, seeing, Yeah, I right? found it really useful. I found it yeah. really useful. Yeah. Like it can help you cut down on a lot of the, I think really the biggest thing is, is what I say is called like the mind drama, like just the amount of spinning of just like, is this like, am I doing this right? Like, like what if they hate this? Like all those, those thoughts of like judgments and opinions that we have, like all that internal dialogue that we have with ourselves. Right. And, and, and so like, that's one of the biggest things, but yeah. So we first things first is always the console. We always talk, like we always look at what's going on with them. Um, and then what are they wanting to work towards and then how can I help them more specifically? So when I work with them, it's all very tailored. So mm -hmm. interesting. Okay. Um, what are you looking for? Is that's an indication that the client is a fit with you? Um, I think it's really about, well, first I always say like, if they're coming on the consult, they're ready to do the work with me because uh -huh there's so many things that happen before that, before they like reach out. And like you know that Ben in like terms of like when you've been doing like when you work with clients and <laughs> doing the market research and all that stuff, there's so many things that happen in the clients of the potential client's mind before they ever reach out or before, before they ever buy something. Um, yeah. So for me, first things first is always like the console. I'm like, okay, they're ready to work with me. Now let's just figure out like what's, um, let's just see now, like if we're a good fit, like if the energy wise, if like, you know, we like each other and it's something that works and their goal is something that works within like this time frame. I usually work with clients six months, but if they have like a goal that I think may take us a little longer, I may suggest like working together one year, but usually six months. So six yeah. months. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, and what do you think your most rewarding client experience was to date? Hmm. Can you say, I mean, you don't have to mention the person's, uh, you know, it's confidential, but yeah. anyone in particular that stands out as a, um, yeah. a really successful, well, I shouldn't say successful because then we're making judgment, but yeah. um, anyone that stands out to you is a really like, we worked together for six months and they really nailed it. Yeah. I or, you know that. what I'm saying? Like, I'm just yeah. like one that was a really positive experience for I you think and for the client. Well, so yes, yeah, so there is like one like particular client, but like, I think it's something that comes across the board is that when they start to realize like for this particular client, it's like she came to me to work on like body image and, and weight. And it was just like, just watching her realize that like weight doesn't, isn't like a measure of, of beauty, like just really untangling a lot of the things that women are taught in our society about what does your weight and what do you look like like what that actually means about your worth and whatnot which is like all total bs like what, <laughs> kind of thing um so it was just so rewarding just to see her like really light up and be so proud to like and feel really confident in herself in her in her body and not feel like she had to like lose weight any longer or to look a certain way like to just let go of those um yeah of like what she didn't realize was really social conditioning of like mm. having to present a certain way having to look a certain way having to weigh a certain number and it's just like oh like that has like and and uncovering that so and for a lot of my clients it's it's that realization of like we put these rules on ourselves that we didn't realize that we have because of what we've been taught, um, you know, growing up or like, you know, who we've worked with, all of that stuff, what we've been influenced in the media. It's just like, oh, like I like didn't even realize that I, that this is something I didn't even have to, like, I, I can just be myself. And that's, that is more than enough. <laughs> it, yeah. And it's interesting you, how you must have felt too being doing bodybuilding right and doing that, that kind of like competition yeah and, and, that, I think that's part and then of... having a client like that and probably helped but 
on mm-hmm. a per, maybe a personal level and a professional um, level, right? Because you're having an experience like that dealing with a, a woman who's a client. And it's really the same thing. And I, I don't know much about bodybuilding competitions, but from what I've heard or seen, it's not only very competitive, but very specific how people are supposed to look. Yeah. Yeah. And like, and that's also, I think also part of the reason why I end up like going into life coaching was just like also my own journey of realizing like, whoa, like that was so much, so much social conditioning, so much of like what we've been taught and, and like how we have to look a certain way and all that stuff. And I was just like, yeah, we got to do something different. This isn't. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I guess, I guess it relates back to our thing, maybe not only about mindset, but also about sustainability. And is it sustainable for you long term for anything like that, and how it mm-hmm. affects your health? Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. Yes. So. Yes. All right. Mental well, that's health. a that's a good chunk of time with the twenty minutes of live, and it's really really want to thank you for that. Um, mm-hmm. It was very informative and very useful. Um, and so, just gonna I dropped up dropped all the info here in the comments about. Uh, how to get in touch with you and my information as well. So thank you again, and we'll talk to everyone next week. Thanks, Ben. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye.